Some of the most interesting things we work on happen at the intersection between human nature and technology. About 12 years ago, I became fascinated with the notion that we might be able to program cells as easily as we program computers. Well, technology is ultimately there to solve problems for people. With all the concerns with global warming, I think it's about time that we worry about it and, and that we do something positive to influence the future. So if you think of the circuit board as a city, uh, the individual chips are like buildings where parts of the election are being conducted. And if somebody can change what's inside one of those buildings, if they can change the machinery that's in there by replacing a chip. A tsunami, for example, you need somebody who knows how to design the building, who knows how to keep it still such that it can resist the force of the, of the wave impact. You also have to worry about the wave going back down because whatever comes up have to go back out. You can actually imagine scenarios where some rogue countries are developing weapons of biological terrorism weapons. They start to develop all these pathogens that we've never seen before. I was trying to um, help convince the, the members of Congress and, and everyone else who was there that uh, this was a problem that they needed to look at seriously. Because policy makers need to understand what changes need to be made and why and how much it will cost. We try to understand what engineers are talking about. Now I think of myself as more of a quality control officer for electronic voting. We should be able to take antibiotics that almost all the time actually kill the bacteria and we become uh, better, healthier in 24 hours. Why shouldn't it be the case with cancer? Princeton is a place that look forward to be the leader in the world. <laughs>